Hi guys, it's Sam here. Today we're going to have a really important video for you guys to do with diversification and why it's so important. These are my own strategies and how I use them to implement my success in the market. But we are not financial advisors, so everything we do say here is just my own opinion and it's not to say you should do the exact same thing. So remember to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button as it really does help us out an awful lot and we're going to get straight into the video here and you're going to learn an awful lot from this. Diversification or diversification. We're going to get into this just over this video, like, and you'll understand what both of these things mean, like, hopefully by the end of this video, like, so diversification is just making sure you can mitigate risk and diverse diversification is just having way too many assets that you're spread yourself too thinly that you're not getting the returns that you think you should be. So we're just going to go through what my opinion is and what I use and how many, how many assets and things I think you should have. Like, so diversification, like it's meaning do not have all of your eggs in one basket. We've all heard this phrase. It basically mitigates risk by betting on one single entity, asset class, stock. Um, it just mitigates all of that risk. So you're not down to one business's failures. So it's definitely really important. Don't put all of your life savings into one position. This kind of speaks for itself. Like, why would you put all of your money into one specific asset that you're betting everything just on this one asset when you can have 10 or 15 uh, different assets that are all run co uh, non correlated and then this mitigates all that risk? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, but look, people do this and um, sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't. Having all, all your money in one position is just extremely high risk. Like it's just, a, yeah, it's extremely high risk. I don't know, I don't know why you would, you would, you would do it unless you feel extremely strongly in that in that company. But it definitely pays you better not not to put yourself in that situation. Like and get yourself a lot more sleep at night. So you, as you can see here, like you have that stock, but the minute something goes wrong with that stock. You've lost everything. Like you, you, they they go bankrupt. They have a poor management decision. Like you have, you've lost everything. Like and you've put all your eggs in one basket, and that basket has broken. Like, so it just doesn't pay you to do this. Like here, we're just going to get into a situation that has happened in our time recently, which is the COVID crisis. So COVID has been a crisis for the last eighteen months or so and it affected certain industries don't get me wrong there was a massive crash last year of over 30 percent in the market we all saw this happen and it affected all different sectors but the sectors that came back were the work from home stocks like video conferencing zoom crowd strike from cybersecurity, um big tech all these kind of stocks they all came flying back and <laughs> look if you were holding some of the some of the other industries that didn't fly back at the time, you were really in hot water. Like, and those were like travel, retail, and the industrials and energy. So oil went negative at one price. They were paying people to take oil during last year, like because they had so much and they didn't have the demand for it. Retail, they were all closed. They all had to go online, like so they suffered from the high street people going in, having their browse and and buying what they wanted. Then you also had travel. Travel has been non-existent pretty much and for the whole of 2020 after March time and 2021 has been struggling to get back to them pre-pandemic levels. So like if you were holding only travel stocks, you just didn't get any of the gains that, that the rest of people did that were diversified across lots of different industries. Like it just does not make sense to put all your eggs in one basket. So energy industrials retail and travel they've had a bit of a rebound in 2020 as the trade has come back and tech has struggled so there's a there's a rotation uh, going on between the high flying tech stocks and going back into these undervalued uh, stocks that they now are and uh, looked at everyone's doing the reopening trade like which is then you're covered for both angles like you have these stocks they're making their rebound it's a really good balance for your portfolio to have a lot of different industries that don't run correlated to each other so like if you're buying tesla and then you buy neo they're gonna run together like 
uh, because they're both the same kind of industry. So it doesn't pay you to have both. Like you pick either one or you pick, yeah, you pick one, you pick the leader in that industry, like, and you go with that one or what you think is the leader in that industry, what you think is the best value at the time. Like, so it's up to your own research and how you interpret it. So reasons for diversification. We've kind of covered these, but look, it's to mitigate business risk. So an individual business it comes with its own risks. You have to take this on board. Like a lot of this stuff is outlined in their um, uh, presentations and quarterly reports. Like, so all this stuff is kind of, is outlined. Like, and you can see what they think are business risks and industry, industry specific risks, risks. So if you're looking at lots of different industries, you can see the different risks. Um, but they're all not going to happen at the same time. The chances of that happening all at the same time are very, very low. Like, so regulation, like, so regulation is kind of coming in more so, like, when you're looking at, um, when you're looking at more so, like, EV and cars. Like, there's gonna be different regulations for like insurance, tax, all them kind of things. Like, just a, a, a quick example, like, um, cryptocurrencies and banks. That's regulation as well is going to be coming in eventually like when they kind of get their head around what they're going to do with the tax models for cryptocurrencies and how they're going to be used so that's a threat to just a different industry so if you have other stocks you're not going to be affected by that so poor management choices may be laying off too many staff or launching a product that doesn't really work out too well or just overspending on like parties and other things like you just gonna have to bear that in mind like parts management can make poor decisions like so you, you really want to do your research to see who's in charge and understand where they're going to go with this less volatility which is extremely important as well like for people that like their sleep at night and if they've only got one stock and you see that it's going down like you're going to be worried you're going to be checking it all the time like you're going to be up the walls pretty much trying to figure out what's going on like but if you've got 10 stocks they're all not going to potentially crash at the same time if just something goes wrong with one company that you own like the other 10 or or 12 or there's not necessarily going to be something that goes wrong with them like so you need to understand that too there's alternative assets like so Alternative assets, like, these are other things you can own along with stocks, like, so, real estate, cryptocurrencies, and you know, these come with their own issues as well, so, just paid by diversified if you've got a large portfolio of money. Oil, silver, oil, uh, grain, silver, all them kind of things, government bonds, government debt, corporate debt, bonds, like, all these kind of things, um, and also, yeah, precious, precious metals, that I kind of mentioned there, like gold, silver, platinum, titanium, all them kind of things. They're all alternative assets, like what you can buy to mitigate your risk from affecting just one asset class, but say it being stocks or cryptocurrencies or gold. Like you can mitigate your risk by doing this, but generally it's for larger portfolios, like that they, that they diversify into all these different asset classes. Like so with people, retail, retail names with, lower net worths they're not going to be diversifying uh, over all of these different asset classes so here we can see the standard deviation of stocks so if you own between one to ten stocks you can see from that graph how much it brings down your volatility index but from 10 to 100 it doesn't really move it too much so that's why i personally try to aim between eight to ten stocks because you can see there how much it brings it down um, it's a huge difference from one to ten and very little from ten to a hundred below that is just the market risk as what it is like you're always uh, exposed to market risks and uh, this just is a way of kind of neg negating that to a certain degree like but yeah definitely aim for around 10 stocks so diversification what this is lower net worth people with example with 50 stocks and 30k net worth you're spreading yourself way too thinly and that you're not going to get the gains that you that you want or you think you're going to get because you're spreading yourself way too thinly that your profits are are just going to be lower you're not going to be right about 50 different companies at once it's very very rare that you'll be right about these things so it's extremely time consuming to keep up with 50 different stocks like you, if you have 10 it's way that easier to manage than looking at 50 it's just common sense really that you wouldn't want to be keeping up with 50 different stocks. 
you can make more effective decisions and really believe in these companies like they're it's definitely way easier to manage and like look these decisions that you make you can make a more effective decision when you have less stocks on where it's going to be the winner and how it's going to take market share grow its revenue it really makes an awful lot more sense to you when trying to learn 50 different stocks you're going to be crossing over different in the same industry with probably three or four different stocks trying to understand how they all operate and how they do it differently it's definitely it's just not going to work so personally i try to aim between eight to ten different stocks across different sectors and different industries so i'm not caught with like Nesla, Tio, uh, Neo, Xpeng, Li Auto, even like said Nikola and Ride. Like I wouldn't just own all the same stocks. Like cause it just doesn't make any sense. Like that they they're all co correlated. So why would you do that? Just think about it logically. Like it's it just doesn't make any sense. If you do want to invest though across a lot of different industries, you're best off to buy an ETF which is just tracks the indices like it's, a, it's an easy way to do it it's pretty risk it's 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 the risk less riskiest way to uh to diversify and uh look a lot of people that can't deal with high volatility or don't want to put in the work they'll go for an etf that just tracks like the s p 500 or even just like the london stock exchange the german stock exchange you'll just pick an etf that tracks it so look that's what diversification is Diversification is just overdoing it pretty much that you're making your portfolio worse by buying way too many different positions and spreading yourself too thinly. So look guys, that brings us just to the end of the video. Please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and I really hope you did learn something good today um, and it's been a pleasure bringing this to you Like, and look, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you guys. Bye.